Welcome back. I just wanted to put out a, a sober warning about this event that's coming up in Washington, D.C. here in America called Together 2016. It's a very ecumenical event and I just want to put out this warning based on the Bible why it's not right. And so let me just start right out. From their website, this is how it's described. Together 2016 is the day our generation will meet on the National Mall to come together around Jesus in unified prayer, worship, and a call for catalytic change. Artists slash speakers include Hellsong United, Carrie Job, Lecrae, Francis Chan, Ravi Zacharias, Casting Crowns, Matthew West, Jeremy Cramp, Lauren Deagle, Andy Minio, and more, including Ann Von Scamp. Organized by Nick Hall. Nick Hall is a young guy, um, and, and I just want to make it clear right now that I'm not trying to judge Hall or his motives, okay? He could be deceived. He could be deceived, and he could have good intentions, um, or he could not. I don't know. But listen to what he said about the Pope. See, this event, they're going to have a message broadcast from the Pope. They're trying to gather like a million um, Christians from all denominations to meet at the mall and, you know, have a rock concert and call for cataclysmic, oh, no. Catalytic change. So, so Hall, Nick Hall, when the Pope announced that he would be part of it, he says uh, that His Holiness would choose to speak into this historic day is a testament to the urgency and the need for followers of Jesus to unite in prayer for our nation and our world. We are humbled and honored by His involvement and are eager to share His message with the crowd that gathers at Together. 2016. His Holiness. Really? Really, Nick? And and so the Pope is he's a he's a Christian. He's he's a follower of Jesus, according to you, then. Even though he has a false gospel and God in his word says that he's cursed. Um, really closer to the Antichrist, the Pope would be. Sorry. Um, oh, and and you're humbled and honored by his involvement, and you want to. You're eager to share his message with the crowd. Oh, really? I wonder why. I wonder why you would be eager to share the Pope's message, since he's a false prophet. Nick Hall is the founder and the chief communicator of Pulse. Pulse. Twin City based nonprofit 501c3 much uh, he's also always got a book he's selling reset yeah we're gonna talk about reset in a minute that's their whole little mantra their little logo Jesus will reset you and all this stuff like a computer you know you need to clean out your files and <sighs> tell us tell us your vision and and uh, then I have a, a thought for you concerning your vision. Go Absolutely. ahead. Absolutely. Well, so the idea is called reset. Okay. And uh, you think of reset when you think of your computer, your yep. phone. Uh, it doesn't work right. You hit the reset button. Yep. Right. By definition, reset means to get the system working toward its intended or created purpose. Wow. Clears the past errors, gets it working again. Right. Your battery life is dying. You hit the reset. It works. Yep. Man, we believe that Jesus is offering a reset to this generation. Okay. And so uh, we believe that God, in the same way, he hardwired us to long for that second chance, to long for that new beginning. And we think Jesus is the answer. And so this thing, Reset, and people can hop online, resetmovement.com. It's a prayer that we believe God is offering. We've already had 211,000 people enter their prayers saying, Jesus, will you reset my family? Wow. Jesus, will you reset my faith? Wow. I was just reading online before this. Jesus, will you reset my addictions? And it's this movement. Again, people coming to Jesus from all walks of life. We know that Jesus is for everybody, right? And this is about a personal encounter with him. 
And then we're ultimately moving people, right? We don't want to just pray this prayer. We want to follow after him. And then we're praying that God would offer a reset to this generation. And so we're gathering, we're dreaming. I don't know if you can imagine with me, but we're dreaming of a million uh, young people. Wow. And really, all generations coming together around them, but a million young people filling up the National Mall in Washington, D.C. As much space as you can imagine, people gathering together for one day, for one moment to say, Jesus, will you reset our lives? Wow. Will you reset everything? Nick Hall is, he's got something to do with the Billy Graham Evangelical Association too and Louis Palau. And, um, so Nick Hall said this, Jesus said that his followers are family. We believe that it is time for a family gathering. Once again, that includes Bergoglio, Bergoglio, the, the Pope. Um, no, actually, that wouldn't include the Pope. It also wouldn't include most of the heretics that are on the guest list, that are on the performance list. Uh, unfortunately, it's not about what divides us, but about the one who unites us, Jesus. The world sees division. We can change that. Hmm. Well, in Luke twelve fifty one. Jesus Christ, the Lord, said, Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth? I tell you nay, but rather division. See, Jesus doesn't have a problem with division when it's separating from error, separating from lies, like what the Pope spews out of his forked tongue, separating from Satan unto the truth, which is the real Jesus. He doesn't have a problem with division. No. In fact, when he comes back, he will divide the sheep from the goats. John 7, 43, So there was a division among the people because of him. Yeah, because of him. Matthew 25, 32, And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. See, he doesn't have a problem with division. Jesus Christ, the truth divides and separates from sin and error and lies and wickedness and worldliness and the unfruitful lusts of the devil. Now, 2 Corinthians 6.14 commands us, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. See, he says, be not yoked together, in verse 14. Then he says, in verse 17, come out from among them and be separate. God is telling us to separate from heresy, to separate from Pope Bergoglio, to separate from these wicked devils, including these performers and these authors that are making merchandise with their false doctrines. Now, that's the introduction. Um, their concept is off. You don't just decide you're going to gather the body of Christ together in one spot. And this includes all denominations. And bada bing, bada boom, let's have a concert and let's, uh, you know, make some noise. And it's all about Jesus. Not if most of the people are there are lost and you're not even going to preach the real true gospel to them. It's all this psychological mumbo jumbo from these people that want to sell their books and their CDs. It's carnal and wicked. They're not going to sit... I would be surprised. I, I, I am going to pray that they will preach the real gospel there 
and that you know Romans 8 28 all things work together for for good to those who love God that there's people there with open hearts that they can receive truth any truth can get through that's that's of God can do that but that still doesn't mean it's right to do it this way okay that's the point this is not what we're called to do is to yoke up with satanic antichrist devils like Pope Bergoglio okay it's wrong it needs to be rebuked so Nick Hall when you go over there and you meet with the Pope next time instead of uh, wearing your proper costume to meet with his holiness of wearing dark clothes because you're not allowed to dress however you want in his presence and giving them a gift of your little book, uh, your little reset book, and smiling at them, why don't you rebuke him in Jesus' name if you're truly saved and born again? And call him down for what he is, an antichrist wicked devil. I charge you with that. Now, speaking of reset, they, uh, they use this symbol in their logo for together... Um, People think I'll be stretching it, but I am a graphic designer. I am trained in art, fine art, and how to do graphic design, and how to create logos, and how to do production work and everything. So when I see, I'm telling you, it just doesn't happen by accident, okay? If a logo looks like something, it's a stylized version of a symbol, that, that's what it is. It's not a mistake, okay? Um, they use the symbol that is called Yoroboros. I don't even know how to say it. All right, and I didn't often find out later. I bet people tell me you didn't say it right. Here's how you spell it. All right, and this is what it looks like. Um, this is an occult symbol of the snake eating its tail, um, and it's used in many occult. Really, all the occult uses it, and we're gonna see even some so-called Christians use it and other stylized versions of it. Um, and the whole point with symbols is they're not always in your face, okay? It's a mystery, Babylon mystery religion type thing where they're signaling each other. They're not always in your face, you know, like with a big red pentagram with blood dripping off it. And, you know, that's not how they work. They, they use symbology on the, on the down low. They, they mix it in, they stylize it sometimes, they, they make it a version of it so that for each other they know what, what it is. Now, this symbol, Yoroboros, symbolism has been used to describe Kundalini energy. And this is the big thing in the emergent church, is this Kundalini power. And it's satanic. According to second century yoga Kundalini Upanishad, the divine power, Kundalini, shines like the stem of a young lotus. Like a snake, coiled round upon herself, she holds her tail in her mouth and lies resting half asleep as the base of the body. In Gnosticism, a serpent biting its tail symbolized eternity in the soul of the world. The Gnostic text, Pistis Sophia, describes the disk of the sun as a twelve-part dragon with his tail in his mouth. Okay, and then we have the Theosophic Society, Helena Blavatsky, psycho witch. Okay, she used it in her little symbol for her theos Theosophic evil witchcraft satanic cult society. Okay, and you have this Ouroboros, Yoroboros, Ouroboros, whatever, around. And then you have like a six-pointed hexagram with an ankh and you know some papal keys at the top or something I don't, I don't even know what the whole thing is but it's part of it that's part of the symbol and it's also used in masonic imagery well uh catholics have been known to use this symbol catholics um example one one example would be uh, pope gregory the 13th he had some special coins made with uh, Satan's face. I mean, Baphomet. I mean, oh, it's probably just a goat and ram horns. I mean, just because, just, you know, I think we'll just put a goat on there. 
no reason. And um, yeah, with the uh, dragon, snake, Satan, <clears throat> excuse me, with the uh, tail and mouth Ouroboros thing. Just, you know, I mean, Pope Gregory the Thirteenth, he was he was kind of a, a interesting guy. I mean, you know, he uh, he had uh, a lot to do with uh, mass murder of the, the Huguenots. Those would be uh, Protestants or Christians. Um, kind of interesting what he did. He held this big event and wanted to have unity with all the denominations. So he tricked all the Protestants to come to this event, and then they massacred him. Yeah, uh, it was called uh, the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre. It happened in uh, 1572. Catherine de' Medici and her son, King Charles IX of France, in league with Pope Gregory XIII, carried out a plan to lure thousands of Protestants to Paris ostensibly to attend a royal wedding between a Catholic princess and a Protestant nobleman. The wedding was presented as an opportunity to seal the peace of St. Germain between French Protestants and Catholics, which had ended the Third War of Religion in France. Instead, it amounted to a successful plot to destroy Protestantism in France by murdering a significant percentage of leading Protestant nobles and a large number of ordinary Protestants as well. The French monarchy conspired with the Pope in Rome to use the marriage as an opportunity to lure the Protestant nobility to Paris and murder them in order to stamp out armed Protestantism in France. The royal marriage was arranged to take place on August 15, 1572. The marriage was concluded successfully, but then massacre time went on for over three days. Uh, the Protestants getting hunted down, butchered, thrown out windows, hung, burnt, drowned. Yeah, bloody, bloody, bloody massacre organized by Pope Gregory the 13th. Upon hearing of the bloodshed in Paris, Pope Gregory the 13th celebrated by declaring a Jubilee Day of public thanksgiving. Guns were fired in salute and the Pope ordered the striking of a commemorative medallion. Subsequently, Gregory XIII also commissioned a mural by Giorgio Vasari to hang in the Vatican, depicting the wondrous St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre. And they claimed that the massacre was inspired by God, and so on and so forth. And it's just a little backdrop on him. And then one of his other coins, you know, he used this, this, uh, this symbol, official, official Roman Catholic stuff, yeah. Well, what does that have to do with anything? Well, Pope Francis used a nice symbol on his recent propaganda for his trip, and it's a stylized version of this occult symbol. You can say it's not if you want, but... Some of us weren't born yesterday. Like I said, when you make a symbol and you make graphic art and you do stuff like this, you, you don't just stumble on things by accident. There is a meaning behind it all, especially with the Babylon mystery religion of Roman Catholicism. It's all imagery and icons and, and um, mystical stuff like that. It's all interwoven in what they do. Um, they also have a, um, there's an official diocese crest, I guess. I don't know the official term for what they have, these symbols that they use for particular dioceses in each state. And one of the official ones contains three of these symbols, not just one, three. And I'll show it on the screen. Now, that's not even a stylized version. That's just this flat-out symbol. First Thessalonians 5.22 says, Abstain from all appearance of evil. Even if, even if the Pope was going on his trips, and even if this reset thing and everything is all perfectly innocent, and they're just ignorant, and they don't know anything about, they, they don't know anything, about anything. 
Um, don't you think that it was, if it was of God, that God would give them the wisdom that this symbol that they're using looks so much like an occult snake with biting the tail that's used so often in the occult. I mean, this is not a random symbol. It's right up there with the pentagram and the trichetra and all these other symbols. It's widely known of. Don't you think that God in heaven would give them the wisdom of that and they could steer clear of that and be like, ah, let, you know, we'll, we'll get our own, we'll just make our own desire. How about maybe just a regular O? Or stylize one of the other letters, okay? Instead of making the O into this little thing that symbolizes eternity in Gnosticism and that the Roman Catholic Church uses, along with Masons, Satanists, um, witches, let's see, who else? Hindus, alchemy it's also used, and alchemists use it for their little witchcraft stuff that they do. 1 Corinthians 15, 33, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Now we're going to get into a little bit about some of these people that are going to be appearing at this event. Reset together. Uh, one is Lecrae. Okay, he is a rapper. And he said, he was asked what his favorite rappers, who his favorite rappers were. He says, I would have to say Nas, Tupac, the Ambassador of the Cross Movement, Snoop Dogg, and not as a rapper, but just as an all-around businessman, I would say Jay-Z. Yeah. I would play some clips, but, you know, uh, no, I wouldn't. Um, he says also, Lecrae says that... Uh, it's not a sin to listen to satanic rap music like the ones that he just said were his favorites with uh, you know profanity and they're rapping about you know drug dealing and uh, gang banging and fornication and uh, wow anyway he says maybe for some and not for others I don't think it's a sin for everyone who listens it may be a sin for some and not for others. Oh, we would call that um, relativism. It's not how God works, okay? It, it is sin to listen to guys rapping about their sinful life and gloating and being prideful and talking about how, you know, they did all these sins and crimes and, and uh, really actually just even complaining about it. But um, then you get into with what the sound is and how it sounds and the spirit behind it and the wickedness of what it stands for and the lifestyle and the greed and the pride and all that. Yeah, it, it's sin. Lecrae, if you're watching, you know, just clear that up a tiny bit for you. It's very, very much so sin, yeah. Not just sin for this guy and not for this guy. Sin is sin. Okay. And uh, there are some things that you can just say, yeah, that's sin. But not if you're lukewarm. You know, you got to just play the fence. And you don't want to offend anyone, really. It's kind of like I can have a conversation with a non-believer and I'm not offended if they cuss every five minutes. Well, I, I don't know why you wouldn't be. If you have the Holy Spirit within you, the Holy Spirit would be grieved. So that should tell you something. Anne von Scamp, she sexualizes the intimate relationship between a believer and God. That's, that's the only way to phrase it. And I'm going to read a few quotes. And you just, this is what she, from her book, 1000 Gifts, page 201. I fly to Paris and discover how to make love to God. Okay, and page 212. The two, Christ and the Church, becoming one flesh. The mystery of that romance. Breath falling on face, spirit touching spirit, the long embrace, the entering in and being within. This is what God seeks with each of us? Yeah. 
you know, this is water. I should have got I should have got a coffee. This is raw. This is this is rough. I'm sorry. God makes love with grace upon grace every moment of making of his love for us. He invites uh, and he invites the turning over of the hand, the opening and saying yes with thanks. Then God lays down all of his fullness into all the emptiness. I am in him. He is in me. I embrace God in the moment. I give him thanks and I bless God. And we meet. And couldn't I make love to God, making every moment love for him, to know him the way Adam knew Eve, spirit kin to spirit kin? Okay, um, so she'll be at the event. Right. Rabbi Zacharias, okay, he's beloved by so many people. I get a lot of mail about, because I include him in one of my videos exposing some false teachers because of what he said. He said this, I know many people, whether they are in Protestantism or Roman Catholicism, who are truly followers of Jesus Christ. Rabbi Zacharias also spoke favorably of Roman Catholic mystic Henry Nowen, calling him, quote, one of the greatest saints in recent memory. A lot of these Catholic connections is kind of, you know, just a coincidence that Pope is going to give a message there that they're all so honored and humbled to, re to share with the world. Today, I... This is a quote from Henry now in this uh, Roman Catholic mystic devil. Today I personally believe that while Jesus came to open the door to God's house, all human beings can walk through that door, whether they know about Jesus or not. Today I see it as my call to help every person claim his or her own way to God. Oh, isn't that Oprah of him? Well, that's, that's a lie. That's a lie. Jesus is the only way to God. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. This is what Jesus said about himself. John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And he didn't mean until after I open the door and then people can get any way they want to. You know, this is this is what's so upsetting is that people don't read. Read the Bible, please. Read the Word of God for yourself. The King James Bible, okay? It hasn't been corrupted. It hasn't had 64,000 words and hundreds of whole verses taken out of it. But I just want to remind again about the symbols, okay? This is a quote from Manly P. Hall, The Secret Teachings of All Ages. Symbolism is the language of the mysteries. By symbols, men have ever sought to communicate to each other those thoughts which transcend the limitations of language. In a single figure, a symbol may both reveal and conceal. For to the wise, the subject of the symbol is obvious, while to the ignorant, the figure remains inscrutable. Manly P. Hall, The Secret Teachings of All Ages. Okay, so when I see Nick Hall in his promo video talking about what is the vision of Together 2016, and it shows him staring at the world's largest obelisk with the reflecting pool, as above, so below, with the bale shaft, I mean obelisk, that faces the sun and all this garbage arraigned. Washington, D.C. is a flat-out wicked. It's, it's designed, the whole place is designed as a big satanic occult ritual uh, place. The way the roads are laid out, everything, right down to it. And, you know, the, the Washington Monument itself, on each side, 55.5 feet. It's 666 inches each side. 
666 inches. I mean, do you think they did that by accident? If, if you do, uh, I'm sorry. You're a little bit deceived and naive. You need to wake up, okay? These things are not coincidence. The height of the monument is 555.5 feet high. It converts to 6,666 inches. <laughs> I mean, you, to do that by accident, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Okay, and, and then you have the obvious symbol, it's an obelisk. Okay, it's satanic from the beginning, what it stands for, if you study that. But then you have all these other hidden meanings mixed together. So this, this man wants to have this event, this is where he chooses to have it. And then he's showing himself gazing off at this obelisk. And they use this Yoroboros symbol, they use this snake occult symbol in their logo. And then on top of that, you have that they give basically a watered down, I would call it a false gospel. Because they're basically telling everyone, you know, Jesus will give you a new start. Jesus will fix your habits. You know, he'll, he'll reset your priorities. He'll, you know, and, and these things are true if you repent and believe the gospel and you're born again. Yeah, you will have new priorities. You will have, you'll be a new creature in Christ. But they're using all these modern terms. you got to make it relevant. And they, they're not preaching repentance. They're not telling people to turn from their sin to God. Um, you know, so where, where people might be turned off by the term Christianity or, or the Bible, um, you talk about Jesus and people are like, oh, yeah, he's a controversial figure. He's interesting. He's kind of a re rebel. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sadist children and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. Okay, and all wisdom and all knowledge comes from the fear of the Lord. Jeremiah 5, 2-4 And though they say the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Therefore I said, Surely these are poor. They are foolish. For they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. Okay, these guys are out there. They're saying, We're going to speak into the generation, and this is a revival generation, and we're going to bring back America, and we're going to do that. Okay? They're prophesying sweet things. They're saying, you know, our country is not going to be judged. We'll turn it around. We'll have a concert. We'll go in front of the obelisk and bow to Baal. I mean, we'll, you know, we'll have some rock concerts and a big obelisk, and it's going to be great. And Jesus will be there with us. And we'll even get Jesus. I mean, you know, the Pope will come and talk to everyone, and God's going to love it. <sighs> These people are false prophets. They're false prophets. It's not of the Holy Spirit. This ecumenical movement is not of the Holy Spirit. Because it's not based on uniting in truth. You can't unite with sin and error and, and all these greedy entertainers and all these false prophets and all these cult leaders, Southern Baptist Convention. I mean, these people are wicked what they're promoting and what they're doing. Um, Josh McDowell with his psychological babble. And these people are not biblical teachers. That's why I implore you to read God's Word and compare it all to God's Word. Um, quit letting them tickle your ears. Jeremiah 5.29 Should I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? Yeah, the people are eating it up. Jeremiah 14, 14. 
Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination, and a thing of naught, and the deceit of their heart. They're, they're telling you what's in their heart, and it's deceit. The heart is deceitfully wicked. Jeremiah 17.9 says that. But they're telling you what's in their heart. God didn't tell them to say this message. That this is a big revival. And we're all going to unite under the Pope. You know, this isn't about all that we're against. This is about what Jesus is for. And it's about a movement that he's doing today. We believe this is a revival generation. It's a reset generation. Beautiful. I... Uh... Uh, uh, we're asking God to reset our nation. When we are reset, we can change the world. We want you to come with us as we pray and as we launch out a year-long initiative, praying that Jesus would reset us and reset this generation. He ran the idea by Billy Graham. And Billy Graham said, you have to do this. And when Billy Graham says you should do something, you do it. But what about the National Mall? How was Nick going to get one million people to show up? Nick talked and prayed and talked about it until day by day, other people started to get as excited about it as he was. Hillsong signed up, Francis Chan signed up, Lecrae, Carrie Job, I'm going. So we got a date and we booked them all. But that's just the beginning. Now we need to fill it. We need to come together, not on Facebook, not with a hashtag, in freaking person. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I sent them not. Yet they say, Sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. These very people that are saying, We're not going to be judged. We're going to have a revival. They're going to be judged for that. And I think they're already reaping the judgment. They seem to be spiritually bankrupt and blind, leading each other into the ditch. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword. And they shall have none to bury them, them their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness upon them. Obviously, these, these writings are about Jerusalem, but I'm showing you something in God's character here. God doesn't play. He doesn't play false games of revivals with false prophets. He shuts them down and punishes the wicked for their iniquity. Okay? It's not a party. It's not a get together and have a rock show in front of an obelisk and call it a Jesus fest. Jesus te espera. Él es quien sembró en tu corazón la semilla de la inquietud. Animate, no tenés nada que perder. Proba, después me contás. Gracias. Jeremiah 23:25. I have heard what the prophet said that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams which they tell every man to his neighbor as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. It's kind of funny, you know, they, they want to have this big festival for Jesus and then they choose this wicked place right in front of the Baal shaft, the biggest one in the world. And then they get Baal's prophet, Bergoglio, to come in and lie to everybody. Woe well, unto you for organizing such an event. Verse 30, Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Their lightness. 
see they're just oh it's all gonna oh it's it's all so light and almost barely meaningless just take your little screwed up life and just add Jesus to it and you know <laughs> lukewarm okay their little message of lightness like oh reset my hard drive Jesus you know Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. And as for having the Pope speak to you, Proverbs 14, Go from the presence of a foolish man, when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. Proverbs 14.5 a faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. And uh, that's what Bergoglio does, is he lies. He lies about the Lord. And um, you should get away from his presence. You should be separate. Come out from among them. Be, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And I'm praying that like I said before, I'm, I will be praying that some good will come out of this. And I'm praying for people's protection, too, because with uh, the little agenda that's going on in this country, um, events like this um, are troublesome and worrisome. Uh, I'll be praying for people to be protected there and for someone to preach some truth through it all. But I just wanted to warn, you know, I, I believe truly born-again Christians should stay away from this event because we are commanded to be separate from heretics and apostates and satanic false prophets like Bergoglio. I will be praying for all those that watch. Thank you. Time for the I trust to God.